Hey guys and welcome back to the episode 4 on our basics of streamlit series and today in this video we are going to look at how to add the widgets that are available inside our streamlit. So some of the examples for our widgets are the buttons, radio buttons, select box or the multi select box and some beta expanders too. And we will look at each and every one of them in this particular video. And without any further ado, let's get started. So let's clear this out. And now let's look at how to create some widgets using our Streamlit and show those widgets in our Streamlit web application. So the first widgets we are going to look at is button and before that let's give a header here and let's say widgets and the first widget we are going to see is buttons. So here buttons is nothing but a button what we use in our Google Forms at the end while submitting and we can create these buttons by using the function button. So st.button and in which I will pass the value let's say save first we need to import our streamlit again so import streamlit as st and now let's save this and let's check our button over here and now here we can see that we have a button named save and now we can also process some activities with the help of our button so now let's add this into a new variable named p for button and now let's use an if statement so if b so if someone clicks on our button then we can write a message for them so st dot write then say your submission have been saved successfully so we can use a success message here so it will be attractive and now let's save this and let's click on always rerun and whenever a person clicks on the save button and he will get a message your submission have been saved successfully and now we can also create multiple buttons but if you use the same named button again and again it will result in an error and in order to overcome that we need to use a parameter named the key so let me show you now let's say i'm gonna create a button st dot button and i will give the same name save and now let's try to run it and here we got an error message that is duplicate widget id that is both the buttons now have the same key now and in order to overcome this error we will use our parameter named the key and in which i will pass a new key so let's say new save and now let's save this and now you can see that we have two new save buttons and for the first save button we will get our pop-up message but for the second one we won't and now it is the time to create some radio buttons so a radio buttons are nothing but the buttons that we usually get in our google forms and you can see the picture over here and now let's create one so let's say uh, status and in which i will use st dot radio and i will pass in the message what is your status and this message will have two options that is either attended so let's uh, imagine like this is they are talking about a meeting attended or not so didn't attend and now let's look for our buttons out there and here we got our radio buttons now we are not being able to check for the outcomes so now let's use our if statement and look for some outcomes over there so if status equals equals attended and then i will print the success message as thanks for attending 
and here we have two radio buttons so I can directly use my else statement else st dot error and let us print attend the next meeting without fail and let's save this and now whenever our radio button uh, is being in the option didn't attend it will pop out an error message like this and if the person attended the meeting and then it will pop up a success message and we can also create an checkbox widget so check box let's create one so if st dot check box in which i will pass in the message either show or hide and now if someone ticks the checkbox and in that case i will print a text message that is this is the secret don't reveal it and now let's save this and now here we can see that we got a checkbox here and when i check this and here i got a secret message that is this is the secret don't reveal it and we have an another widget named the expander and in order to create a expander widget we need to use the function beta expander so in order to create that we use with with st dot beta expander and in which i will pass it the message show me the secret and now whenever someone checks for it i will pass in the same message for him too and now let's save this give cancel over here and here we got an expander and now when i click for it i will get this message these were normal widgets and now let's move on to some widgets which helps us to select a particular option firstly we will look at a select widget which helps us to select a particular options so in order to do that we have to create a list or a tuple of values so now let's say i am taking a variable named the lang which stands for language and in which i will use r go and php html css um java c++ and okay let's finish it off with c and now we have to create a select box in order to create that we will use the function select box and let's name a variable named the c and st dot select box and in which i will pass in my name for this particular select box so let's say choose your favorite languages and now i will pass in my list lang over here which is my second parameter so firstly let's check for this and here we got a select box where it has the title choose your favorite languages and here i have all the list of languages that i passed in and by default uh, it will have our element that we stored at the beginning that is the element of which its index is zero sometimes the users might get confused so which option they particularly selected and in order for that we can use our format string too so st dot write and in which i will pop in a message you selected this particular language so format and in which i will pass my value c and let's save this and now here we got a pop-up you selected python and when i change it to java and here it got updated and changed to java some computer science enthusiasts may have some many more favorite languages 
so in order for them we have another widget named the multiple select box and in which we we can allow them al or allow the users to select multiple options from the given list of options so let's name a variable fav lang so it, which is for favorite language and st dot in order to create a multi select box we have to use the function multi select so multi select and i will pass in the name for it so again i will copy this and paste it over here and then i will pass the list of values that is the language so lang and let's save this and now here we got an another select box and this is a multi select box and we can select so i like python and let's say i like c++ and now here i have selected those options and we can also assign a default value in order to select a default value we have to pass in a parameter named the default and in which we can set it to let's say i want to set it to go and let's say this and now we can see that by default our language go has been selected and now i can add python with it and lastly we have a most interesting widget that is the slider so slider and now we let's create a variable named the age and st dot in order to create a slider we use the function slider and i will give the name for it so enter your name i mean age and then i will put up a starting value so let's start from the age 5 and i need to end it till 90 and i have an another parameter named this step which is by default one so let me show you that let's save it and in our web app now we can see a slider so which is increasing one by one and now we can change its step value to so let's say this step equals 5 and now our value will increase from 5 10 15 20 25 and goes on we can also pass in an another parameter that is for default value so our slider is a function that takes positional arguments so that uh, the first argument is the start the second one is stop and the third argument would be my default value so now let's say i want a default value to be 25 and the step value to be 5 and let's save this and now you, you can see that uh, 25 is right over here and it has been set by default so if i remove 25 you can look at the difference that it is starting from the start value and you can have a doubt like is the sliders are only used for my numeric values and it is absolutely not we can also use sliders for categorical values too so let me show you an example let's take a variable again let's choose language and in which st dot in order to create a categorical slider we use the different function that is the select slider so select underscore slider and with which i will ask you to choose a language and then i will give the options for you and this is a particular parameter we need to pass that is the option and in which i will pass lang so lang and let's save this oops it is options and now we got it so these values range from python to c that is our starting value is python and it is ending with c language our slider has been marked from python to c and we can play around with it so r go php html css java c++ and c so we can use this in other way too so we can store it on a variable named the colors 
and we can pass in the all Vibja colors that is violet, indigo, green, blue and many. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Like the video, leave a comment down below and let's meet on July 7th with our episode 5.